Hi Kit. Hey Kit. Come here. There you go. So Kit here is pregnant. And uh, she is about four years old. This is her third litter, probably her last litter. And she's probably, historically she has three, she's had two litters so far, three puppies each. I suspect it's gonna be the same this time. So she's obviously pregnant. It's be hard for you to see it for this few. <laughs> Cats can they come and say hi? Cats. <laughs> um, but anyway, it is now day 51. Day 61 would be a normal time to have a C-section. After we're talking about after AI. So, um, 10 days out. What are we going to do? Well, we are going to give her a worming for the next three days with fendabendazole, very safe stuff, three days in a row. And the amount that you give of this is one milliliter per five pounds of body weight. She weighs a little bit under 20 pounds. So that's, she's gonna get four cc's of this. And she's not really crazy about it, it doesn't taste very good. She ain't gonna like it particularly, but she's gonna take it. All right, what else have we been doing? So something else that you should always be doing with your dogs is give them one tablet, five milligrams of folic acid every day from when you bred her until she has puppies. Why do you give this? Because it helps prevent birth defects, things like cleft palates, those kind of things. Um, we do sell this on my British supply. This is a bottle of 100 tablets. I don't know exactly what the cost is, $15 maybe, something like that. It's not very expensive. This will last you for a couple of litres at least, probably last you for three litres. Certainly two anyway. Um, Give that every day. If you go look at supplements like uh, Oxymum or an Oxymate, things like that, they don't have enough folic acid. They have, typically have about 800 micrograms. And remember, it takes 1,000 micrograms to make one gram, and they need five grams. So they're getting about a tenth of what they need. So um, there goes the cat. All right, so you, again, this should be every day. Okay, what else do we give? Um, vitamins. People ask me what vitamins do we give. This is one that Tammy's got, you know, it's a multivitamin. It comes from a well-known company. Is this magically, magical stuff? No, I think that any decent vitamin, we get gets one of these daily, is good. And then a probiotic. Um, Tammy gives probiotics to dogs, especially if they have a little bit of a loose stool, she'll give a probiotic. Um, and so we don't give this daily, but we do give it, you know, if she's got a bit of a loose stool, she's gonna get it for a day or two. Right, Kip? Okay, all right, so, you gonna come up here? Come on, let's show you off. Oh, you're gonna be all huggy-duggy on me. So, what do we need, what, what else do we need to be paying attention to on Kit here? Well, we're gonna start taking her temperature about five days to a week before C-section. You're a bit hot out here, aren't you? A week before C-section. And it's one of the best markers to tell you when puppies are gonna arrive. So. Her temperature is going to be, and I will, I will show you videos as we get close to C-section time. Her temperature is going to drop. Right now, it's probably going to be about 100.5. And it's going to drop down slowly over the next 10 days until it gets to 99.0. Right after that, she's going to have puppies typically in 24 hours. So once you get to 99.0, we're looking for 98.9. That's the magic number, or anything less than that means puppies within typically 24 hours. Also at that point, she will stop eating food too. So those are all good markers. And then finally, the last thing that we're gonna do is we'll do a progesterone test uh, when we think we're close, which is typically when a temperature gets down to about 99.3, we'll get a progesterone test done and find out we want our progesterone to be th three or less. The problem with progesterone tests is people will go keep going to their doc to go get progesterone tests done and it's not very useful because it doesn't tell you how close you are to having puppies. All it does is tells you um, that you're in a safe zone. So it's a go, no go test. So the problem is that the progesterone level, the day before she goes into whelp, it could be 17 and it could drop down to 1.5 overnight. So it's not a good marker that can tell you when she's due. It can just tell you that it's safe to have puppies. All right, we're gonna give her this. She's not gonna like it, but that's okay. So what's the secret to give this? Just get it in the corner of her mouth and quit mucking around. As you can see, 
obviously doesn't taste very good. And the secret here is not to let the dog fling it all over you. Hang on to their face until they've licked everything up so that there's not a big spray. Otherwise, she'll shake her head and uh, you'll get covered in uh, this uh, white, um, not gonna do any harm, but uh, anyway, there we go. She's taking it all, good girl. Okay, then she's gonna get another of these. The secret on this is, is to put this in, if you just give this to her, she's not gonna like it. You're gonna have to force her to eat it. So a much better way of doing this is what I do is I get a piece of cheese and I bury this in the cheese and give it to her that way. So that's what we're gonna do. When your dog is uh, pregnant, the last you know, three weeks of pregnancy, you do not want her jumping up and down or stuff. So she's used to getting on the bed. I re recommend that you maybe have some stairs so she can get up and down herself or you need to physically help her get up and down. So I just left Kit here, a little bit dangerous. I know that she's gonna stay, but the point here is we would not want her jumping off because it's just not, yeah. So here we go, good old string cheese. Just cut me off a piece of this with my fingers, like that. Then I'm gonna hide the tablet that she will spit out. If I give her this, she's very likely just to spit it out. So I'm gonna bury that inside the piece of cream cheese. And there it is, it's tucked in this cream cheese. She's used to getting this and she's looking forward to it. There you go. Then just keep an eye on her because sometimes she can she, she did spit out a piece of cheese but it wasn't the, it wasn't the tablet it was just her getting in a hurry to eat it here you go have the rest of that there you go good girl so um what what else should we be doing well if you've got any concerns about what's going on especially in the latter stages of a, of a pregnancy um go to your vet one of the things that you will see that does worry a lot of people is you get a kind of a mucousy discharge hanging off the back end or hanging off a vulva. It, kind of look, it may be a little bit brownish or tinged with blood. That's the mucus plug. It is completely normal. You don't always see it, but typically you see it something between day 10 and day zero of the back end of her heat. Absolutely normal. People get in a panic when they see this. They think something terrible is happening. This is aborting a puppy. It's not. If she aborts a puppy at this stage, it's going to be something that's a, it's a some really reasonable size. It's not going to be a little structure. So, but if you get some discharge from your dog, I've got videos on this. Pay attention to it. Um, you know, if you've got a dog that has an elevated temperature above 102 or higher, when you take temperature, that's of concern. That means there is something going on infection-wise, and that really needs to be treated right away. That does mean probably antibiotics and certainly a vet visit to find out exactly what the details are. But kid here is being completely normal with her pregnancy. I've been around this dog for now for the last two pregnancies. She's uh, been absolutely fine. Um, she's getting definitely slowing up, you know, in terms of she doesn't want to run around very much. I normally take her for a walk every day, but I probably won't starting today. I, I might take her on a short walk and see how she does, but I don't want to stress her out. Definitely today it's overcast. It's not going to be too hot. It'd probably be a decent day for it, but don't get your dogs hot, especially the back end of this. That wouldn't make any sense. So what do you think, Kip? You ready to have some puppies? She's a great mum. So we'll, we'll show you videos when the C-section's happening. We'll show you pictures of the videos of the puppies when they're born and over the next few days, right? I love this dog. She's such a nice little dog. Small little dog. She is a Eurohero. hero. So a Eurohero hero is a dog that is, she's a fawn dog that has, she's maskless, and she has this, what looks like a Shiba Inu coloring. She's white. In other places you don't normally see, she's white on her chest, she's white on the inside of her arms, she's white on her cheeks. So it's, it's not tan points, it's different than tan points. And if I can get her to sit up here a second, you can see her underneath, you see that she's white, and she's white on the inside of her arms. Not tan points, which would normally be all the way up in here, she's just white on the inside. So that's a Euro hero. And um, we bred her to our new boy, Gobstopper, who is a, a new shade Isabella and uh, carries a copy of Cream. So we have an opportunity, and his masters, we have an opportunity to get some uh, Euro heroes out of that breeding. So we'll see if that happens. So there we go. All right, Kip. Enjoy your puppies. Enjoy your doggies. See you soon. Bye.